Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IAS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 15th May 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is motivational quote. It is regarding strength. So where there is no struggle, there is no strength. So strength which mainly comes from struggle. Okay. So today's struggle will be helpful to gain your strength. So now let us try to see first topic. It is regarding CDS that is Chief of Defense Staff. So title says back to the drawing board on the role of Chief of Defense Staff. So this article is important from your defense point of view which mainly comes in the GS paper 3. So now let us try to talk about this topic. And this topic is important from both your mains and as well as your prelims. So we are going to see some facts regarding this chief of defense staff and even why it is in news and as well as some important details. I think you can remember who is this person, this Bipin Rawat, right? So now let us try to see context. It mainly says that our union government is reassessing the concept of post of this CDS chief of defense staff and the Department of Military Affairs, that is DMA, our central government, which is mainly reassessing the concept of this CDS, whether to continue or not. And this one is even regarding this Department of Ministry Affairs, Military Affairs. Okay, so mainly because to fix overlaps in the system and to streamline the process, leading to a delay in the appointment to the post according to the official sources. So according to the official sources, there is some delay which is regarding the appointment of the CDS. If you see some details, it mainly says that on higher military forms based on experience so far, somewhere the government realized that appointment of this chief of defense staff in itself wasn't enough. Okay, so based on the experience and now government realized that appointment of the CDS it is isn't wasn't enough and there are not only this but there are number of issues which are mainly related to this post that is equivalence of status responsibilities of the CDS etc so there is a government pause which is mainly seen regarding this appointment of the CDS so if we're talking about some facts regarding the CDS in December 2019 government approved for this creation of this post of the CDS and actually this CDS would also function as a principal military advisor as well. So he is a military advisor for our defense minister. And if you are talking about along with this CDS, we also came with this uh, department of military affairs. It mainly created as fifth department in the ministry of defense. And if you are talking about some facts regarding the CDS. So here recently General Bipin Rawat mainly served as 26th chief of army staff he took over this first post of the cds in the country on january 20 uh, january 1st 2020 so what happened along with him so his wife that is madhulika rawat and 12 others they were killed in this imf mi 17 v5 helicopter so helicopter which mainly hit some uh, hills in this nilgiri region and finally that led to death of these all these people so the broad mandate which mainly given to CDS includes bringing about jointness in operations, logistics, transport, training, support services, communications, repairs and maintenance of the three services. So if you are talking about some facts regarding this CDS, actually the CDS will be giving a single point military advisor to the government and it mainly suggested by this Cargill Review Committee in 1999 and he will be the four star general and the CDS chief of defense staff who mainly acts as a permanent chairman of chief of staff committee as well and what is the core function of the CDS it is mainly to in to involve in the greater operational synergy okay between the three branches so which are those three branches army navy and as well as air force so these are about this topic and now let's try to see next topic it is regarding denial of justice would lead to anarchy says our chief justice of india so this article is important from our polity point of view which mainly comes in a gs paper too 
and this topic is important from your mains point of view so now let us try to understand this topic in a very great detail so chief justice of india okay chief justice of india who is present chief justice that is nv ramana sir so nv ramana he mainly said that whenever there is denial of justice whenever there is denial of justice that will finally leads to anarchy so denial of justice will also leads to anarchy so this is the quote that can be also used in the whenever you are writing your judiciary related answers and if you are talking about details it mainly says that expeditious adjudication of disputes is a hallmark of healthy democracy so here when we are going for adjudication of disputes so it is a one of the hallmark which mainly talks about how healthy democracy is so denial of this justice would leads to anarchy so this is the thing which mainly said by our cji in the foundation the, he mainly attended foundation stone playing ceremony of a new high court complex in srinagar okay he also said that so this however this uh, judiciary it is working it is one of the important hallmark of healthy democracy and here whenever we are having a good adjudication of disputes cases means what happened so it will mainly increase the trust in the people and here people will feel that their rights their dignity they are mainly protected in the country and here people will think that peace only will prevails when people's dignity and rights are recognized and as well as protected so this is the thing which mainly said by c j i he also underlined that one of the major challenges to the protection of the rule of law and as well as human rights is the inability of the formal justice system to deliver the speedy justice to all so the justice delivery system in india is very very complex and as well as expensive so these are some important things which are mainly said by c j i so now let us try to talk about next topic it is regarding quad initiative for vaccines run into rough weather so this article which is mainly talking about quad initiative of supplying of vaccines so this article is important from your gs paper to under international relations and this topic is important from your prelims point of view not from mains so now let us try to see context so if you see context it mainly says that more than one year after we came up with this first quad summit so in this first quad summit uh, that is not about this this is the first quad summit but this is the first quad summit for this vaccines okay initiative for this covid-19 vaccines so more than a year after this first quad summit where leaders of this quad who are the leaders india us japan and australia so india us japan and australia they launched an ambitious initiative and this initiative it is to provide 1 billion doses of this covid-19 vaccines for the countries to present in this indo-pacific region right and if you are talking about this target so we are not going to reach this target because of some issues or challenges so if you see details it mainly says that so the original plan it is to produce single shot of johnson and johnson vaccine at hyderabad based biological e facility for this squad vaccine initiative so here we are mainly need to follow the safety norms security norms etc so but we didn't get this emergency use approval and even if you are talking about this corvey vax so this corvey vax it is also had to receive this who emergency use listing under uh, under this for distribution so because of some hurdles we are not going to reach this target so in addition here there is also some oversupply of vaccines that are mainly seen in this south asian countries so because of this there is decreasing of demand for the vaccines so because of this our target of delivering of 1 billion uh, dose of this covid 19 that it is not going to be fulfilled so we are talking about some facts regarding this quad so as you all know quad it is nothing but quadrilateral security dialogue so it is informal it is informal strategic dialogue okay it is mainly between four countries that is india usa japan and australia and they mainly came together for a shared objective to ensure and to support free and open prosperous indo pacific region and the idea of this quad it was first mooted by japanese prime minister shinzo abe in year 2017 so 2007 okay for the first time in 
your Japanese Prime Minister that is Shinzo Abe, he mainly came up with this concept. So first of all, in 2007, Shinzo Abe came up with this concept. But in from 2007 onwards, there is no further movement of this quad because of Australia, which mainly pulling out of it because of pressure from China. So in December 2012, finally, Shinzo Abe again floated this concept of this Asia's Democratic Security Diamond. So it also involved Australia, India, Japan and US. And finally, they mainly focused on maritime concerns. Okay, maritime commons from Indone Indo Indian nation to this uh, Western Pacific, that is Indo-Pacific region. So in 2017, India, US, Australia, Japan, they mainly gave a shape to this long pending quad coalition. So this is about some facts regarding this quad. And now let's try to see one case study which is important in your society point of view. So that is Siliguri's all girl group fights child marriages. So this is about one group okay and this group mainly contains girl, uh, girls and one girl she is leading this group mainly to fight against this child marriage in this Siliguri region. So this article is very important because child marriage it is one of the important challenges that we are facing. So whenever you are writing answer regarding this child marriage you can also incorporate this case study such that it will enhance your presentation and will also help you to get more marks. So if you are talking about context it mainly says that Koil Sarkar 19 years old girl she mainly leads all girls group in Siliguri and this group which mainly works on ending of child marriages in her community. Okay, so this is about this topic and if you are talking about details, so the group name here is Girl Power Group in her village and this is a community led initiative which mainly supported by World Vision India. So it is a non-governmental organization, so this non-governmental organization that is World Vision India which is mainly supporting this Girl Power Group. And there are more than about 1500 girls, they are mainly part of this group across 65 villages in these three blocks of this Darjeeling region. And what is the important work of these girls? It is mainly to sensitize their peers and as well as other residents to uh, issues of this child rights and as well as trafficking and as well as child marriage etc. And they will go for public announcements in the local market to spread awareness and as well as child marriages. And they will be also conducting some street plays and talk to their community members to collect information about the impending child marriages. So if they come to know if there is a child marriage which is going to happen means so they will try to convince or they, they will try to meet that young girl who is uh, going to be married. Okay and they will come up with a casual conservation okay conversion uh, with her to find out the time and as well as date of wedding and they will go at that time to stop that marriage. So in this way, these are the some strategies that are mainly followed. So this article, it is also important from ethics as well. So if you want to bring the attitude change here, so we will be talking about this ABC, that is affective behavior and cognitive components. So what are the steps which are taken by this girl? It is mainly based on affective behavior and as well as cognitive basic things. So first one is they are going for sensitizing their peers. For example, whenever they are getting pressure from their family members, so that will become some of this affective component. And the behavior means we are mainly going to uh, going for some con uh, conversions and as well as we are going for spreading of awareness campaigns, street plays and talk to her community members that will come under this behavior component. And whenever we are talking about what will be the pros and cons here, so that will come under this cognitive thing. Okay, And we are also can talk about some case studies like also what will be the effect of this uh, child marriage. So why this girl which is mainly involved here because she is the one who mainly uh, facing some issues uh, regarding uh, whenever her mother went for child marriage and her father abandoned them and whenever she was at two and a half years old so her father mainly abandoned her so because of this she want to avoid this child marriages especially to save the number of children's life and their future so right so this article this is also one of the case study regarding this ethics regarding attitude chapter and now let's try to see next topic it is regarding blood group of humans and primates so this article is very important so if you're talking about blood groups you will be having different blood groups like a b and o and a b so these are the four blood groups that is a b o and a b so in this we will be having positive and as well as negative okay a positive a negative like that we will be having positive and negative so these blood groups are very important because 
if you want to go for transfusion of blood so if there is any accident which is mainly happened so if there is any severe blood blood loss which mainly happened means we need to go for immediate transfusion of blood so if you want to go for transfusion of blood blood we need to know the exact blood group whether it is positive or negative or whether it is a b or o or a b pos a b so that we can bring that so and so blood and we will be going for transfusion so if if there is a if there is a b blood group means if you are uh, transfusing a blood group a blood into that so and so person means that will leads to acclimatization and finally that will leads to the loss of the life of that so and so person and because of antigens which are present in the body so now let us try to see the context so actually this our uh, topic is important from your science and technology and this topic is also important from your anthropology point of view as well so if you see context it mainly says that blood types are determined by the presence of certain antigens okay so blood types are determined by the presence of certain antigens and these antigens are the molecules that mainly trigger an immune response and if they are foreign to the body of the recipient so if we're talking about details it mainly says that landmark research on these was done by a medical doctor so actually this uh, blood groups they were mainly founded by this Carl Landsteiner so Carl Landsteiner he did some researches and he mainly found with this four types of blood groups he collected the blood samples from the several of his staff members and found that the serum of those some of them led to the clumping together or perspiration that is mainly seen while others they had no problem with the donor serum so here because of this whenever we are mainly adding so if there is a blood group whenever you are adding this bleed blood group means we can see there will be like precipitation or we can say like clumping which is mainly seen so here using this information he mainly came up with this uh, blood groups like a b and as well as o at that time so carl uh, this carl landsteiner also awarded with this nobel prize for his study in 1930 as well and if you are talking about why we are talking about this blood groups now so recently one study which mainly is done and this study which uh, report which mainly says that so the distribution of this a blood group b blood group o and ab blood groups in india it is to be 23 percentage 34 percentage 35 percentage and 8 percentage so a is 23 percentage b is 34 percentage o is 35 percentage and ab is 8 percentage okay and southern states they have higher group o group okay it is about 39 percentage in the southern states so if you're talking about latest paper this mainly talked about blood groups so blood groups of neanderthals and as well as denisova decrypted so neanderthal or early early humans okay okay so whenever there is trans uh, trans uh, transfusion like we can say like whenever from apes humans are developing so we came up with number of uh, intermediate uh, human beings like neanderthals is their homo erectus and homo uh, erect, homo uh, erectus and we can see homo habilis so these are the some important early man or mainly developed in the stage of transformation of a ape to the humans that is homo sapiens so what happened neanderthals is also one of the person okay one of the human early human so if you're talking about this uh, paper which mainly talks about blood groups of neanderthals and as well as denisova which mainly decrypted so the point of this blood group system they were first uh, phenotyping markers they are mainly used in anthropology to see for the origin of populations across the world so in anthropology when we are studying about the human traits so we will be studying about uh, we will be also deciphering this uh, a blood group as well okay so it is one of the phenotypic marker that can be helpful to study this human evolution so here especially from this aboriginal humans they migrated to various parts of the world for example eurasia sub-saharan africa australia papua new guinea and as well as other places as well so if you're talking about the analysing or analysis of this blood groups or blood group markers of some neanderthals and as well as the deniso ones they showed that yes there is a presence of a b o blood groups here okay and in and if you're talking about another report which mainly published by dr p cramp in this primatologia so he mainly said that so, so the primates for example chimpanzees gorilla orangutan gibbons they have the blood groups containing of a b a and as well as b and o just what we have in the humans 
so here indeed here bell groups like a b o a b so we are mainly getting from our primates so here millions of years ago so these primates also having these bell groups that had been transmitted okay that had mean uh, that had been inherited from this uh, primates so here our blood it is our heritage just as our genes are so from monkeys to arachic humans and our ancestors to today so we have this blood group that we got from this primates so in this way we can say that hanuman of ramayana not only helped goddess sita by bringing her to safety uh, bringing her safely to her home but he also blessed us with our blood groups so this is about the conclusion now let us try to talk about next topic it is regarding lunar regolith so this is a regolith from the moon so now let us try to understand this topic so this is important from your gs paper 3 under science and technology so if you see the context mainly says that scientists they have grown plants in the soil from the moon so from the moon what are the soil they bought so in that soil they started growing the plants okay it is a first in the human history so university of florida researchers they showed that plants can successfully sprout and as well as grow in this lunar soil so this is one of the important achievement in the science and technology that we can say so if you see details it mainly says that so their study also investigated that how plants respond biologically to the moon soil it is also known as moon's uh, regolith or lunar regolith so lunar regolith it is nothing but moon's soil so here if you are talking about this study so in this study they went for growing of one day uh, so they were mainly going towards this growing of plants for the food and oxygen on the moon on during the space missions so during the space missions if we are going for the growing of plants uh, for food and as well as this plants will also provides oxygen means so it will be very much helpful for this space missions as well so in future long space missions might use moon as a hub for launching pad okay so because of this here this soil it is a uh, to know the properties of the soil is also very very important and if you are talking about a small experiment which mainly began so plant seeds in the lunar soil and they added some water nutrients and light so here they start recording the results so in this results they mainly found that 12 grams of lunar soil which mainly collected during this apollo 11 apollo 12 and apollo 17 missions to moon so they are using this soil here so all seeds planted in this lunar soil they sprouted but the plants were very smaller and they grew more slowly okay and there is also variation that is seen in the size so these oh, these were all physical signs that plants were working to cope with the chemical and as a structural makeup of this moon's soil so this is about this topic and now to start to see next topic it is about water on mars so this article is also important from your science and technology which mainly comes under your gs paper 3 so please refer some facts regarding this mars so let me know why mars is called as red planet in the comment box so if you say context it mainly says that hydrated minerals discovered by chinese robotic rover that is jurong jurong mainly found that hydrated minerals were discovered um, on the surface of this mars so in this way it mainly suggests that there is presence of water okay there is presence of water on this planet surface for longer than previously thought so this is according to this chinese scientist so if you see some details it mainly says that according to an analysis of data signs of water they were detected in the sample minerals just 700 million years ago so this is the thing which mainly said by the scientist so i said about the homework regarding this marks okay regarding this marks uh, mars and as well as uh, you have to know why it is called as a red planet so this is also very very important and you have to know about the mars missions of india and as well as other countries like nasa other countries uh, space organization like nasa so now let us try to see yesterday's question the first one is according to indian constitution which of the following it is not a fundamental duty so fundamental duties are present in 51 article a of indian constitution they are not present in our original constitution so which amendment through which we add this fundamental duties to our indian constitution so let me know in the comment box so first option here is to vote in the public election next one is to develop scientific temper to provide education for children up to 14 years next one is to safeguard public property so here vote to vote for public elections it is not at all present in the fundamental duties so correct answer is a 
that is one next question it is regarding dpsp that is director principles of state policy so consider the following provisions under this dpsp as enshrined in a constitution so here you need to identify liberal intellectual principles so to promote education and economic interest for scs and sts it mainly comes to the gandhian next one is to provide equal justice and uh, and free legal aid for poor it mainly comes under socialistic next one is to protect monuments of national importance yes next one is to separate the judiciary from executive in the public services of the state yes article 15 which mainly talks about that yes and next one is to secure all the citizens uniform civil code throughout the country yes so correct option is c d and e option 3 is correct answer and these are today's questions so first question is regarding article 368 of indian constitution so there are three statements you are given so try to read the statements and give me the correct option in the comment box and next topic is about simple majority so which of the following provisions can be amended by simple majority so this is also a very very important question so try to answer these two questions so let me make a small announcement on this platform we in rathod science we came up with this foundational course so please try to take this foundational course for you are in 2023 as well as 2024 so the validity of this course it is 2 years and we provide conceptual clarity for sure and as well as we are mainly focusing on recent current affairs and also we are discussing previous year's prelims and as well as mains question so in this way this course is absolutely beneficial for the students who are who want to give their attempt in 2023 as well as 2024 and the cost of this foundation course it is just 60000 rupees with 2 years of validity which also includes prelims test series and as well as mains answer writing practice course of 1 year so this course is absolutely beneficial and if you have any queries please call me at this number 8074765513 and if you want to take individual courses like only history classes only polity only uh, geography only ethics only international relations polity and governance and as well as uh, disaster management so you can take this individual courses also so if you want to watch the demo videos you can visit our websites rathodsisacademy.com and there you can register with your email id and later on you can watch three demo videos which are of free of cost right and if you have any queries so please call me on this number and this is also whatsapp number you can message me on this number and if you want to get the pdf of this class you can join the telegram channel telegram channel link is given in description box right and now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so this is our today's hindu newspaper pdf and date is may 15 okay may 15 2022 this is delhi edition so now let us see the articles which are important from the today's hindu newspaper for your upsc and also for your other state public service examinations as well So regarding the CDF, I discussed in the first topic, and you can leave the city page. There is nothing much important. Okay, and if you move forward, in this states page, here project to make Delhi road disabled friendly. It is also very important because these disabled people are also part of our society. So we should not deny the opportunities for these disabled people. So here government. okay with delhi government it is mainly came up with this project is a one of the appreciable project and in this page you can see about this asani leaves better taste for ap salt farmers so what happened because of this heavy rainfall due to this asani cyclone which mainly affected salt production in this ap so here especially this may month it is especially suitable for this uh, salt production because of this cyclone which mainly affected this salt pans okay and if you move forward here you can see denial of justice would lead to anarchy i discussed this topic and here experts vary for sleeper cells in punjab so i think you might have seen number of movies especially in telugu we have this thupaki movie which mainly talks about the sleeper cells okay sleeper cells or grave threat actually we don't know that who is a sleeper cell and who is not so whenever they are getting order they will be get activated right so here experts mainly having some concerns regarding the sleeper cells in punjab so in the view of recent spate of incidents which are mainly around this kalistan connection so especially in this punjab haryana and himachal pradesh so there is a debate which is mainly happening regarding this revival of this kalistan movement 
because this kalisan movement which mainly gains some amount of momentum so because of this now there is some cause of concern regarding the sleeper cells in punjab you have to refer this topic and if you move further this article which mainly talks about indian government to prohibit export of wheat with in with immediate effect so here we are talking about this uh, export of this uh, wheat because due to this russia ukraine crisis there is decreasing of uh, exports of this wheat from this russia and ukraine to some european countries and they are mainly facing some uh, food insecurity so because of this it mainly provided an opportunity for india to increase this uh, wheat okay wheat exports so so there is also some threat for food security there is also some threat in the food security union government which mainly prohibited the export of this wheat within the immediate effect so the decision which mainly announced in the view of sudden spike of global price of wheat arising because of many factors so here what happened now we are mainly seeing about the food security of india and we are mainly going for immediate stall of this export of this wheat and next topic it is regarding this quad initiative for vi for vaccines i discuss this topic and so it is regarding silly guris all girl group which mainly fights against uh, this stale marriage i discuss this topic so this is very important for your society point of view and next article it is regarding uae president that is sheikh mohammed okay sheikh mohammed name uae president so this is very important especially when we are talking about this india uae relations which mainly comes under the international relations and next topic is regarding committed to this asian for generation says us so this article which is mainly talking about in us and as well as asian relations so president now present president of us he mainly promised a long term commitment to the southeast asia in the face of the chinese growing clout in this region and as well and as well as here biden he mainly made an announcement that dollars 150 million in the few in the new initiatives were mainly announced for the plans for the for this uh, asian countries and here in this context here us which mainly said that here it needs free and open a space stable and prosperous and resilient and secure secure indo pacific region so this is some important thing and you can go through this article once and here in the science and technology there is one article regarding this first step in treating some neurodegenerative disorders so if you're talking about neurodegenerative disorders we can talk about alzheimer disease okay so if you're talking about the cell which is mainly contain genetic material for example let us take about mrna so mrna and proteins uh, which are mainly known as rna granules they are the important they are very very important because this rna granules are not covered and confined to the mem membrane itself so what happened this article says that now researchers of this iisc bangalore they identified a protein in the yeast cells and actually this yeast cell which mainly dissolves this rna protein complexes okay that is called as rna granules so this findings it is a critical for many neuro degenerative disorders for example uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and as well as uh, frontotemporal dementia etc so for all this neuro degenerative disorders so this is very very helpful and these neuro degenerative disorders they are mainly characterized by accumulation of aggregates that mainly resembles this uh, gna granules so we are going for dissolving of this R, sorry and rna granules so then that will be helpful for uh, resolving from these uh, neuro degenerative disorders and this protein is called as protein sbp1 okay it mainly promotes for this degeneration or disintegration of this rna molecules okay and this study also found that this sbp1 protein which mainly helps in reducing this uh, aggregates of this human proteins which are mainly involved in this neuro degenerative disorders as well so this is about the study and next topic it is regarding this uh, bio material from fungal extract which mainly helps heal wounds so actually we mainly came with some bio material from this fungal and it mainly having some properties for the healing, uh, healing of wounds and this one is it is about blood marker identified for the babies at the risk of sids so sids is nothing but a sudden infant death syndrome so in this sudden infant uh, infant death syndrome so this study which mainly found that there are some lower levels of enzymes called as bche that is butyryl cholinesterase enzyme which is very much low level okay so because of this it is mainly having some impact on the brain's arousal pathway 
and that will also leads to the low levels who uh, reduces sleeping so whenever you are having reduced uh, level or low levels that will also leads to uh, infants sleep uh, okay sleep ability and they will be wake up early and as well as they will be respond to the environment so findings which are mainly said that so because of this low levels of this enzyme that is leading to this uh, sudden infant death syndrome and next topic is regarding blood group and primates i discussed this topic and i also discussed regarding this runa regolith and next topic is about india's foreign exchange resource of falling so here recently here uh, we can say rbi which mainly increase our gold reserves under this forex reserves okay so you have to remember this and even in this sdr we need to talk about this uh, foreign currency levels as well so recently here in yesterday's lecture in yesterday's article especially indian express it mainly talked about gold reserves so we can connect this topic as well and one more important topic it is about pardon and remission so this is important from your polity point of view you have to talk about pardon powers of president and as well as governor so this is clearly and clearly written in our lakshmikant you can go through that once so by this i'm concluding so these are some important articles that appeared in this today's newspaper so i hope you enjoyed this lecture so please subscribe to rathore science academy and don't forget to subscribe and as well as share the videos to your friends as well thank you so much